This is a precision analytical hormone tutorial. Today we're going to talk about estrogen metabolism, specifically the 216 ratio and its potential clinical significance. So here's a recent review uh, by Dr. George Gilson, um, and he references another review, which I think is a good one to know if you're looking for good information on meta-analysis on the 216. Uh, so basically the general thought is that the higher your 216 ratio, the better you are in terms of being protected against breast cancer because the two hydroxys are good estrogens and 16 hydroxyestrone is a quote-unquote bad estrogen. So the more relevant uh, recent data really doesn't support uh, its use as much as one would like to see. Uh, this particular review, they saw indication of no effect on breast cancer risk. Uh, so the notion that the estrogen metabolite ratio is associated with breast cancer risk is not on a robust statistical foundation. And they go on to note that it's even worse when you're looking at women on estrogen therapy. So... That is the reason that Precision Analytical does not include this as an independent marker on our test. If you wish to use it in your practice, that's fine. Um, you will have to do a little bit of division. So simply take the 2-hydroxy-E1, divide by the 16-hydroxy-E1, and then look in the comments um, under estrogen metabolism, and we will include the reference range there. So if we look at data from individual studies, we can see just how unimpressive this ratio is with respect to breast cancer risk. So here is the data from the WHI study. You can see women on no hormone therapy. Here are your cases, here are your controls, and you can see that there's really not a lot going on there in terms of a distinction between cases and controls. If you look at all the hormone therapy combined, um, you know, here are your cases, and that pretty much fits within the, the, the range of results for the controls. So there's really not uh, a lot going on there in terms of it being indicative of risk for breast cancer. Some of the studies I find particularly misleading when, if you look at this study in the abstract, they say postmenopausal women at baseline who went on to develop breast cancer showed a lower ratio. But when you actually look at the data, the 16-hydroxy-E1 is identical in the cases and the controls. Now the 2-hydroxy is a little bit higher in the controls, meaning the ratio is a little bit higher, but it's entirely dictated by the 2-hydroxy-E1. So it seems to me a little bit misleading to say that the ratio has significance when one of the numbers that make up that ratio is identical in the two groups. So not very impressive data. Uh, contrast that with this, where we're looking at women at high risk, women with breast cancer, and if this was 216 ratio data, I would you know, have a little bit of a different opinion on it because this is pretty dramatic data in terms of the distinction between cases and controls. Um, but... This is actually a measurement of the formation of DNA adducts. So we're going to get into some hairy biochemistry here, but we'll try to break it down um, so we know what's going on here. So I'm going to use the little uh, red guy here to uh, signify metabolites that we associate with bad things and the little angel uh, logo here for those metabolites that are preferred. So we've got E1 and E2. Those can interchange between uh, each other. And then you can see over here are the 16-hydroxyestrogen. So essentially you're getting, you know, 16-hydroxy-E1 uh, from estrone. And then 16-hydroxy-E2 uh, is actually estriol. And then those two would interconvert between themselves as well. But what we want to focus on are the 2 and the 4, 16 hydroxy estrogens. So the 2 hydroxy estrogens are more favorable in terms of cancer risk. We know that. We know that things like DIM, I3C will help upregulate this pathway. And so that's used a lot to keep from making the 4 hydroxy estrogens in any great amounts. Now, once we've made a 4-hydroxy estrogen, which we hope not to, but once we do, now we have a chance to make 
for methoxyestrogens or for it to continue on to make uh, the quinone which is over here, and that's going to be something we'd rather avoid. So we want to see uh, COMT and this methylation really upregulated as much as possible to, again, keep from making the quinones, because once we make the quinone, now that can go on to form what's really problematic, and that's what they're measuring in that data we just showed, are the 4-hydroxy DNA adducts. So the quinone can actually attach to DNA and cause... Uh, you know, a repair to have to happen. And when that repair happens in error, that's where you get the carcinogenic potential. So at this 11th hour, you still have glutathione that can help you out. And then quinone reductase, which is upregulated by things like resveratrol. So we've got a number of steps where we can intelligently help people to decrease their risk for the formation of these DNA addicts and we can see some pretty dramatic data in terms of their potential risk, not just for breast cancer, but also prostate cancer. Uh, but the 16-hydroxyestrogens don't play a role in this uh, really whatsoever. And so, as we're looking at estrogen metabolism and evaluating it, we don't again, present that ratio, but it really is there in sort of an indirect measurement. I'll show you the way we present this. So we've got two cases here, people have a lot of estrogen, right? Lots of E2, lots of E1, well outside the range. Uh, and then we're going to look at the metabolites. And why I think this is very relevant is the person on the right, or on the left rather, is actually has pretty favorable metabolism. I mean, you can see the 2-hydroxy E1 is really favored. So this person potentially is on something like DIM or I3C, I'm not sure. Uh, but they make a lot of 2-hydroxy estrogen. The 4-hydroxy, which is the carcinogenic one, and the more potent 16-hydroxy E1 uh, is quite a bit lower. So this person's 216 ratio, I think our range ends up being around 2 point something to 6 point something. So you can see that this person's ratio is well above, um, you know, the lower part of the range. And so they have a good 216 ratio, but what we really want to do is look at all three of these. And so we look at what's normal in terms of the distribution of those metabolites and what this person has. And you can see they have an under representation of both the 16 and the 4, the quote unquote bad estrogen metabolites. Whereas the person on the right is really not metabolizing their estrogen favorably. So they've got an overproduction of the 16, an overproduction of the 4, and an underproduction of the 2. So kind of a worst case scenario where you've got lots of estrogens and really bad metabolism. So in the case on the left, if they're experiencing symptoms of estrogen excess, they might want to focus more on, you know, the production of estrogen and maybe reducing it, um, you know, in terms of what's going on with aromatase or maybe, uh, you know, using calcium deglucurate to get those estrogen levels down. Whereas the person on the right, you would think would benefit a little bit more from something like DIM, where you're going to probably get a really big increase down this 2-hydroxy pathway, which will decrease the 16-hydroxy estrogens, decrease E1, decrease E2, and you would hope to see some subsiding of estrogen dominance symptoms. So there's the issue of estrogen dominance, but then there's also the issue of risk in terms of breast cancer and things of that sort. And the person on the right obviously does not have a favorable 216 ratio, but we want to look at that in light of not just the 2 and the 16, but also the 4-hydroxy. So let me look, show you an, an example of where that can be really important. So let's focus in on just the metabolites. So both of these people have 2-hydroxy E1s of 0 0.6, and their 16-hydroxy estrogens are very similar as well. So their ratio is well below 2, so the ratio is going to be low. But in the person on the left, they're really not making much 4-hydroxy estrogen, so the relative risk there is probably nowhere near where it is for this situation on the right, where you not only have less of the 2, but you've got a lot of the 4-hydroxy estrogen. So that's someone where you know we, we really want to look at that carefully in terms of what that might mean for their relative risk. But again, the 216 ratio is going to be the same in these people, but you know the 4-hydroxy is probably uh, the more relevant piece of this. So then the last piece to look at with estrogen metabolism, which is pretty relevant in these cases, is methylation. So we can look at the relative conversion of hydroxy to methoxy. 
So you can see on the left, you've only got 0 0.2 for the methoxy. On the right, you've got 1.2. So there's a lot more of this conversion going on on the right. So there's your methylation activity, which is high, whereas on the left, it's low. So this is good because if you make 4-hydroxyestrogens, we really want it methylated. Otherwise, again, it's free to make uh, quinone. Um, so the, you know, that's someone who we, we really want to address that metabolism very carefully. So I hope this has been helpful for you. Again, our position at Precision Analytical is that the estrogen metabolism uh, overall is a very important part part of analyzing the sex hormones of both men and women, but the actual ratio uh, with the 2 and the 16 um, really doesn't seem to have the significance that we'd like to see when you look at the more recent meta-analysis and the, the studies that have been done. So we're looking at all three. Again, you can calculate the ratio uh, yourself and then look at the for the range there in the comments, uh, and you're free to do so. Um, but that's why it doesn't uh, exist on the report. But again, that information can still be extrapolated from the way that we're presenting this data. So if you have any feedback or would like to contribute to this conversation, feel free uh, to reach out to us via email or phone, and we'd love to continue these conversations and hope you found this helpful.